Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be looking at how England should set up at Euro 2020. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and like that goddamn video. Anyway, let's get this party started. At the World Cup in Russia, Gareth Southgate teased the nation and took England to the semi finals of the World Cup for the first time since 1996. He set his England side up in a 3-5-2 that featured two number 10s in Deli Alley and Jesse Lingard and a second striker in Raheem Sterling. The system worked really well against weaker opposition with a structured build-up out of a back three and the movement of the front four. However, England struggled against sides that pressed them and they crashed out against the hard-working Croatia side. So if Southgate is to take England one step further and win a major international tournament, how should he set up? The 3-5-2 suited England's players at the World Cup due to their their lack of natural width from midfield and how it allowed them to build up against deep lying sides but just a year later and England have a plethora of attacking talent so Gareth should re-evaluate. Against weaker sides such as Czech Republic, Iceland and Ukraine an offensive 4-1-4-1 could allow England to stack their side full of attacking talent. The system relies on a solid defensive platform that allows the forwards to interchange positions freely. Flying fullbacks would complete the system that can transition to a 3-4-3 three in attack. Key to creating in this system would be down the right hand side. No player in Europe's top five leagues has registered more assists this season than Jadon Sancho and this would be key to England in this system. At Borussia Dortmund Sancho likes to get on the ball deep before driving with the ball supported by Hakimi on the overlap. Key to this is how Hakimi reacts to Sancho's movement. If Sancho goes out Hakimi makes the underlap and vice versa. This relationship could be improved with Trent Alexander-Arnold at right back. Alexander-Arnold is a fantastic attacking forward back and has found making underlapping runs as well as overlapping ones for Liverpool this season. Trent Alexander-Arnold became the youngest player in Premier League history to register three assists in a single game. For the balance of this side on the left hand side Gareth Southgate would need a goal scorer. Both Raheem Sterling and Marcus Rashford could excel in this role. However the Manchester City man has shown to be a better poacher than Rashford so will probably get the nod. Rashford though could be a more direct option on the ball and could change the game from the bench if Sterling perhaps isn't providing enough attacking output. Centrally Southgate could also pick players based on flair and vision rather than defensive work rate and could choose forwards to play in two 3-8 roles. Deli Alli and Jesse Lingard would reprise their roles from the World Cup but James Madison and even Mason Mount could add more creativity on the ball if they can continue their current development. But England didn't struggle against weaker sides at the World Cup. Against Colombia they were lucky to make it to penalties and they were comfortably beaten by both Belgium's B team and Croatia. At the top level of football teams need to be tactically flexible and fluid, relying on a number of different systems for different opposition and circumstances. The 4-4-2 diamond would be an excellent tactical option for Southgate because of its flexibility. It would allow Southgate to overload central areas, play both two centre forwards and a flexible number 10 whilst also possessing danger on the break. This setup could do well against teams of similar quality such as Switzerland, Portugal and the Netherlands. Due to its competitive nature in the centre of the pitch while still maintaining a threat in attack with two centre forwards and a number 10 that could operate either as a playmaker or a second striker. The diamond would allow Southgate to field a versatile team with the likes of Harry Kane and Marcus Rashford up front with Sterling just in behind. This would also allow midfield three of Eric Dyer, Jordan Henderson and playmaker James Madison. James Madison has created more chances than any other player in the Premier League and tops both open play and set piece rankings. In the diamond teams often rely on creativity from fullback or one point in the diamond. Perlo dictated from the base, Pogba and Coutinho have done jobs in central midfield whereas Joachim was exceptional at the tip. With Raheem Sterling's goal scoring at number 10, James Madison could operate in a similar role to Paul Pogba at Manchester United, where he drops deeper to pull the strings, allowing the forwards to pin their opponents back. This setup may start as a diamond but could change on the fly to a 4 2 2 2, a 4 4 2, a 4 3 3, or even a 3 4 3, with Dyer dropping in between the centre backs and Sterling operating as a false nine. This would work against good opposition that have similar qualities to England, but against the best or tactically astute teams, the diamond's weakness could be 
be exposed. The natural counter to the diamond is to stretch the pitch horizontally, either through wingers or wing backs, and the best sides in the world would find a way to exploit this. So against the best teams in world football, such as Spain, Germany, Belgium, or world champions France, a 4-3-3 that defends in a 4-5-1 would be perfect for England. Liverpool have shown against Manchester City that a hard-working midfield combined with a pacey forward line can overcome superior opposition, and England have pace in abundance. With Kane up front, England could afford to sit deep and play direct to the centre forward. And as shown for Manchester United, Marcus Rashford and Jesse Lingard are exceptional on the transition. They also work really, really hard, and Manchester United have struggled without the pair. In midfield is interesting though. England lack mobility in central midfield, so a midfield of Jordan Henderson, Eric Dyer, and Declan Rice may struggle to cover the ground necessary for this formation. However, playing Aaron Wan-Bissaka at right back would free Trent Alexander-Arnold to play in central midfield. Whilst not being capped by England yet, Wan-Bissaka has won more tackles than any other player in Europe's top five leagues, with a success rate of 94%. This is a statistical anomaly in terms of tackles. Traditionally, the top tacklers in world football would have success rates around 75%, not 94%. Wamba Saka is effectively the Lionel Messi of tackling. Back to the midfield, Trent Alexander-Arnold made his name at senior level as a right back, but played in central midfield through his youth career, and his ability on the ball would be invaluable. When he plays right back for Liverpool, he can often lose his marker if they drag him inside rather than going on the outside. Playing him centrally would eliminate this hole in his game, but also would make the most of his tenacity in defence and crossing in the final third. Different systems could use different defenders. For example, Ben Chigwell could get the nod over Luke Shaw in the 4-1-4-1. But when I've seen Chilwell, I'm unsure whether his all-round game is better than Shaw. At right back, Alexander-Arnold is far the best attacking fullback, and Wan-Bissaka is the best defensive ballback, so the circumstances could dictate who plays. At centre-back, the partnership of Joe Gomez and Harry Maguire would be perfect, with Maguire as the aggressor and Gomez to use his pace on the cover. But anyway, guys, what do you think? How should England line up at Euro 2020? And can they win it? I've been sat on my Dave. Subscribe if you're new. Anyway, see you guys later. Thanks for watching guys. If you haven't heard already, we've partnered with Squawker and we'd really appreciate it if you could come over and support us by clicking their channel. And if you like what you're seeing, why not drop them a subscribe? Alternatively, if you've enjoyed this content, why not check out one of my recent videos?